Hola, mi amigos, and welcome to the Sir Gladiator Show. On this edition of the Sir Gladiator Show, I'd like to discuss the shocking and historic WrestleMania 30 results with you, the fans. Now, I'd like to start with the uh, WrestleMania pregame show, which was uh, pretty good. The uh, the match, the uh, tag team title match, the elimination match, a lot of fun. The real Americans uh, eliminated uh, two of the teams, and then, uh, of course, sadly, they themselves were eliminated uh, the final elimination. Uh, they uh, really should have won that match, but instead it appears they're going to break up. So that's, that was... That was an unfortunate decision. Was the match itself was fun? It was, uh, as we all know, not the only unfortunate decision uh, uh, on this uh, historic uh, night. Um, but uh, more on that later. Uh, of course, the uh, one of the biggest matches of the night was uh, Daniel Bryan versus the Game Triple H, right? And uh, Triple H had his uh, weird little entrance, uh, kind of like he had against John Cena some years back. Um, don't really know what to tell you about that, uh, but uh, the match itself was decent, but nothing really particularly special, per se. Um, it was, uh, good for what it was, I suppose, and, uh, ultimately, Daniel Bryan wins. Now, of course, uh, Daniel Bryan is an internet favorite, uh, but the, sort of the way he was beating everybody, you know, he beat Triple H, and then, of course, later he would uh, beat two other uh, stars that are, you know, so much bigger than him. It, it was it was rather absurd, but, uh, but again, I know that most Internet fans uh, wanted to see that, so that's why it happened. But, uh, you know, speaking of absurd, uh, you know, worse is yet to come. Um, nothing will compare to it. Um, but uh, one of the things that was really good... Uh, was the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, uh, in which, uh, quite the surprise, uh, Antonio Cesaro, uh, not only did he win the thing, but, but the way he won it. And, and you really have to see it. If you haven't seen it, you just have to take my word for it. It was incredible. Um, it was, I, he picked up the big show, who was the, you know, the other final uh, competitor, and what he did he picked him up like a body slam, uh, you know, very much like Hogan body slamming Andre the Giant. If you saw that, you know, if you've seen any of that millions of times, they've shown that you know, in the lead up to WrestleMania 30, you know. Um, imagine Hogan picking up Andre and instead of body slamming him, he carries him, uh, you know, to the rope and throws him over the top rope. It was incredible. It was unbelievable. Yes, it was very awesome. Uh, and so that was a heck of a moment. Uh, uh, sort of a, a less happy moment was when the uh, apparently the Shield uh, injured uh, somebody very badly, one of the members of the uh, New Age Outlaws. Uh, I guess when, when they did their big, uh, it was a heck of a sight to see. They, they uh, double power bomb both members of the New Age Outlaws for their finish, but uh, not so much of a heck of a sight when, uh, you know, you end up severely injuring, the, you know, one of the people that you're doing it to. So that was unfortunate, but, uh, but as for the results, the Shield did win very easily, and that was uh, pretty darn reasonable, right? I mean, there, there, uh, you know, as far as results and, and whatnot, it, you know, it, was, it was all very good. If only they could have not hurt that poor guy and um, sent him to the hospital. That would have been a lot better, but uh, but again, they were they were doing something that, uh, to my knowledge, I don't know if they've ever, ever done it before. I don't remember them ever actually, you know, doing the, doing their big three man power bomb on on two people at once. I mean, it was a heck of a thing. It was a, it was a heck of an idea, and and to see it, it was it was uh, impressive. It just turned out to not at all be a safe thing to do, and so hopefully they won't be doing that again. Uh, at least maybe they'll like practice it first or something because that was horrible you know what they did to that poor guy anyway um i want to go now to uh, what everybody's talking about i think that uh i think we've all waited long enough for uh, 
your friend and mine to give his uh, commentary on uh, one of the worst uh, decisions right, in the history of WrestleMania. I mean, I don't know what to compare it to. Uh, the Undertaker losing the streak to Brock Lesnar, a part-time guy. I mean, I mean, you, you can sort of analyze little bits and pieces, say, well, the buildup was terrible. The match itself wasn't particularly good. You know, Brock is a part-time guy. He's he's lost all these other matches, and he's he's not, you know, remotely worthy of this. You know, you can look at each piece individually, but but it almost doesn't matter because I mean, you can just look at it from the bigger picture. I mean, great day in the morning. You know, this is the historic WrestleMania speech. I mean, streak, and this is um. And this is Brock Lesnar. I mean, if, if the streak were ever going to end, which it probably shouldn't, but you you could at least make a little bit of a, a little bit of an argument for uh, for if it were the right person, you know, if you had if you had like uh, somebody like a Roman Reigns, but not right now, but like if Roman Reigns were to continue to be awesome for a year or two and really be a big star, you know, or you know, if CM Punk were still around or you know, or if, or if Daniel Bryan could prove himself over a year or two, so, something like that. Somebody who could really benefit from it and, you know, and, and, and use it for years to come. Um, this is not, obviously not the case with Brock Lesnar. Um, he doesn't really benefit from it much, if any, that I can think of. And he's not even around all that much, even if he did. Um, I mean, this is just, it's, it's horrible, is what it is. It is, it is just absolutely horrible. Uh, you can assume that, uh, that The Undertaker, maybe he's retiring, maybe he isn't, I don't know. I don't, I don't have any knowledge about, you know, these sort of things. I'm an insider, you know, I don't know uh, the inner workings of that. But, I mean, you can certainly make a reasonable assumption until you find out. Of course, he ended up in the hospital, too. So, uh, you know, for real. Um, so I don't know that he'll even be on Raw tonight to, uh, at the time of this taping, it would be tonight. I don't know when you're, when you're watching this, but uh, when I'm taping this, this is uh, the afternoon of uh, the day after WrestleMania, which means it's the afternoon before the Raw after WrestleMania. Anyway, um, so yeah, I don't even know when we'll see him again. Uh, I mean... Uh, it's, it's horrible. I mean, basically, uh, the one thing they did was they really shocked people. And that, that was the best and only good part of that, of uh, that whole match, was, you know, sort of the shocked reactions by the fans, you know. So they, they did shock people. But it reminds me of, of stuff that, you know, that my dad would say sometimes. He'd say things like, uh, you know, or say we're watching a ball game, a baseball game together, and it would be like the, the base is loaded. You know, and the guy's coming up, he's a good power hitter. He'll say, yeah, this guy, he should lay down a bunt because, you know, they'll never expect that. You know, or when we're watching a football game, it'll be like fourth and 20. So they should, they should go for it because the other team would never expect that. You know, it's like you've got the right idea because you, you always want to keep people guessing and, and surprise people. But you don't do it when it's a really, really terrible idea. It's like if, if it's surprising you because it's terrible, you know, then you don't really want to do it, you know. But that's what they did. They su they surprised people because it was so terrible. That's why it was a surprise. It wasn't a good surprise. It wasn't a logical surprise. There wasn't anything good about it. it. It only surprised people because it was terrible. So, I mean, so that isn't a good surprise. It, surprising people is good. The surprise itself, you know, just that element of it alone was good, but it was a surprise because it was one of the worst decisions, maybe the worst, in the history of WrestleMania. So that is not good. Anyway, uh, but, but uh, probably the best moment of the night was um, actually in the next match that nobody cared about because they were still uh, just stunned from The Undertaker streak ending so they you know the 
the Divas Championship match, you really couldn't, you know, if you're in, you know, the crowd, you can't get into whatever match is next, you know. Um, so that was just an unfortunate position for them to be in to follow that. Um, but it was a great uh, moment that when AJ Lee retained her title, uh, it's sort of against all the odds. You talk about being against the odds. I mean, she was you know, literally in a match with what, like something like 13 other women. I mean, I don't even know how, what the number was. It was a ton, a ton of uh, other women. It was, it was one fall to the finish. So whoever pins anybody or makes them uh, tap out, uh, they win. And it doesn't have to involve uh, the champion in any way. Just whoever beats whoever becomes the champion. It was, it was absurd, but it was obviously you know, heavily stacked against uh, against the champion, who was, of course, AJ. But she prevailed. She uh, won the match. She uh, To say that she made Naomi tap out was sort of uh, a bit more literally true, if you saw it, because she actually, uh, she sort of made, uh, she sort of uh, seemed to make Naomi, you know, basically pass out. She didn't seem to necessarily be conscious anymore. You couldn't tell, but she... She wasn't tapping, but uh, possibly because she was out. But in any event, what she, what uh, AJ did was she uh, took Naomi's hand, you know, and acted like you know Naomi was tapping. She tapped Naomi's hand on the mat, and and the referee bought it. But of course, she was beat anyway. But uh, but you know, it, from the psychology standpoint of the match, she needed the. Uh, the referee did not have to, you know, raise her hand three times, have it fall three times, because I'd give the other performers, you know, too much time to get in there and, and uh, you know, break up the submission hold, right? So in, in theory, she needed that victory as soon as possible. So she, so she took her hand and, and and made like she was tapping out. It was it was hilarious. It was great. It was the moment of the night. It was it was the best moment of the night, and the about the only thing that could really cheer you up after such a horrible, historically horrible finish of the match before. So that was great. Um, and, of course, we had the main event. And, again, uh, I know that most people wanted to see Daniel Bryan win that. And, uh, and and to me, I like Daniel Bryan, and he can be entertaining, but he's really not in the same league as uh, – certainly obviously not in the same league as Triple H. And he, you know, and, and so, he should, so from my standpoint, he shouldn't have even won to be in the match. But, again, I know that it's all – you know, he had to beat him because he had to be in the match, and he had to be in the match to win. I understand how that works, so, I, so I'm already a little bit, you know, annoyed that he's beaten someone who's, who's so, you know, who he never should have beaten to begin with, and then he's in there with, you know, Batista and Norton, both of whom were so much bigger than him. Although I understand that, you know, Batista probably not so much anymore. Batista's more of a has been, but uh, but Orton is still, you know, a much bigger star than than Brian, and yet, and yet Brian has beaten him like a thousand times in a row and like Raw and stuff, you know. It, it just it's just so crazy because I mean he's not you know you, you would think that uh, you would think that Brian was Superman and and Orton was like Santino you know but, you know and by Superman I mean Cena you know but uh, you know Brian is I mean Brian is better than Cena but you know he's being booked like Superman like uh, you know like Cena always was um, and it's just it's just bizarre. You know, they, they did that spot where they did the Batista bomb and RKO combo through a table. And he's and he's still just and, and he still just gets up and goes in there and beats them like it like it wasn't much of anything, you know. I mean I mean even I don't know that even Cena was ever really booked quite that absurdly. But so they to say they push him to the moon is an understatement. And uh I didn't like it, but I know that most people did, and so so congratulations to all the, you know, extreme Daniel Bryan fans. I'm I'm a Daniel Bryan fan. I've got the uh, T-shirt. I wear I wear the uh, Daniel Bryan T-shirt around. But even I, you know, think this is absurd. But but for those of you who are even bigger fans than me and, and don't find it absurd, it was it was uh, you know it was certainly a heck of a moment, very special moment. Uh, there was it was a weird moment uh, when he was celebrating. He got the confetti going. And, and, and this little girl and this woman come in the ring and are celebrating with them. And I don't know who those people were, by the way. Uh, you would assume. I mean, you could only assume that they're, that they're his wife and daughter. But it's like, okay, uh, if he has a wife and a daughter, 
Then what's the stuff on uh, on Total Divas with him and uh, one of the Bella Twins? What's going on there? What, what's what's this? You know. So I, I don't know what the heck that was. I mean, I I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure that there's some people out there who know what what in the world that was. Um, I mean, was that not his wife and daughter? Was that like his sister or something? I mean, because it sure seemed like it was his wife and daughter, you know. But I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm not in the know on this one. But that was a very weird because I mean, it certainly gives you the impression. It gives you the impression that that's his wife and daughter, but he's supposed to be engaged to all the Bella twins. So you know, you know, he doesn't live in Utah. You know, you can't really marry both of them at once. You know. Um, so I don't know what, you know, I don't know what to make of that. That, that was bizarre. At least, at least to me, that was, the, I guess, the most entertaining part of the main event was uh, just, just the bizarreness of that. Because like, it's like, what the heck? And I don't know what the heck. Um, I couldn't begin to tell you. Uh, maybe somebody can, you know, share with, with uh, all of us, uh, you know, in the comment section there. Uh, who those people were and, and why in the world, if, if that was his wife and daughter, why in the world they were there because they, they had sure done it, if that's who they were, they sure done a good job of hiding them from the rest of us as, as they clearly should have done. Why did they stop doing that? Because that's, they've completely ruined their storyline with, with him and, and uh, uh, Brie Bella, I believe it is, it was Brie Bella. Um, I mean, that, that rather ruins that, you know, and, and for nothing. Right. So and even if it isn't, again, even if even if somehow those people are just relatives of his rather than being his wife and daughter, or even if it's like maybe it's his sister and and his niece or something, you know, I mean, it, it still looks like it's his wife and daughter. So you're still ruining the storyline to some degree uh, if for, again for nothing. So, so that was that was insane, hilariously insane. I guess that was the final crazy decision of the night. To, to have that happen because it doesn't even matter what the truth is because all you know really all that matters is what it looked like and and that just that just killed what they're doing on total divas one way or the other either because it really is true that he really is married to somebody else or just because it makes it look that way and, and because who would know I mean I don't know you know I'm I mean you know and I'm somebody who generally can find out these pieces of information I'm sure if I looked really really hard I could find out but I've looked and I, I can't find out who those people were, you know. So, anyway, it was a crazy, crazy night. Um, the really, really huge Dan O'Brien fans, congratulations. You got uh, your big moment that you wanted for a long time. Certainly, I, as a Daniel Bryan fan, I wanted to win the title. I didn't really want to win in that kind of extreme fashion, you know, where he's uh, like, like more superhuman than The Undertaker himself, even when The Undertaker's actually winning, you know. Um, I thought that was it was over the top, but you know I appreciate you know this was his moment and he certainly had it coming for a very long time, quite frankly. Um, but regardless of all of that, uh, everything really is overshadowed by the historically insane decision to have the Undertaker uh, streak end to you know with the hands of Brock Lesnar of all people. I mean. I'm not remotely a John Cena fan, but even he would have been better to win the match than, than, than Lesnar. I mean, some people were talking about Sting. Sting next year obviously would have been vastly better than, than uh, Lesnar. You, you'd be hard-pressed to, to find somebody who wouldn't have been better than Brock Lesnar. He's a part-time guy. It made no sense. It was crazy. There was all kinds of crazy. And really, a point of fact, that doesn't really matter who you name. They probably shouldn't have ended the streak because the streak shouldn't have ended. But... Uh, but in any event, it was crazy. It was uh, just a, an insane night. Certain certain things happened that were that were very good. You know, Cesaro, AJ, you know, um, and uh, and even Cena winning. I liked him beating uh, the wife. I think they've been they've been pushed way too much too fast. You know, you know, to me. So, and I'm not even a John Cena fan. And I thought that you know it was good that he. Uh, he sort of slowed that down a little bit because it's, it's kind of absurd. I and mean, they had him, they had him like defeating Daniel Bryan at the at the, at the Rumble, right? I mean, this guy's a nobody, and Daniel Bryan's you know been around for years. He's one of the top guys. He's beating him clean. Like, what the heck, you know? I mean, it was just absurd the way that this Bray Wyatt was beating everybody, you know. So I'm glad they, you know, at least 
put a, put the brakes on to some degree on that because that was that was insane. Um, but uh, but you know the good moments were were uh, not a whole lot of them, but they were good. And uh, and boy, the crazy when it was crazy, it was historically crazy. And um, well, that's your WrestleMania 30. Uh, please feel free to leave your comments and, uh, you know, in the comment section. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe to uh, enjoy more of uh, your friend and mine, Sir Gladiator's videos. And until next time, have a great day.